Welcome to Supreme Commander. Today I've got a 5 versus 5 for you. This is a pro-rated game. As we've said, 10 players overall, just 7 points splits these two teams, which is very tight indeed. That works out just over 1 point per player. For those that are new here, wondering what's he talking about, the average rate in the point split. Every player has a true skill rating in Supreme Commander Forge Lines. That rating is influenced by how well they play, both individually as well as in team games. And this assigned rating goes up or down depending on if they win or lose. And that way every, every single player has a fair rating. The more games they play, the fairer that rating becomes. And what that means today is that this game is incredibly tight. The two teams, 10 players overall, five on each side, are separated by just one point per player on average. And so without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. Oh, and get the salt ready because someone is about to get, well, salty. Also, big shout out to Alistair. Thank you very much for joining the Patreons. Your help is much appreciated. Never expected. Do hope you enjoy the one versus ones on there. But for now, let's crack on with the game. Just before... Actually, let's unpause. Let's do it. Let's be real clever. We'll unpause the game. And we'll show the little ruler on there. So you can see, I've already lined it up. I've saved you the mother. It is exactly a 15 by 15, this one. So we'll do away with the ruler. And let's begin... Introducing our two teams then in yellow and purple, Team 1, Team 2. Team 1 up in the top left-hand corner, Team 2 on the lower right, which is perfect for me because those old-timers around there, out there, will remember, like me, these little rectangular objects with pieces of paper in. They were known as books. And what happened when you had this book, a little bit like writing on a page today on the internet, is... The words start in the top left-hand corner and they end up in the lower right-hand corner. And so this here is nice and easy for my brain. Whenever you have Team 1 down here or up there or even, for goodness sake, down there, I always get a little bit confused. And as some of you regulars know, yeah, it doesn't take much to confuse him. But let's make a start then. I'll tell you what, we'll start back here. Is Nomander in Seraphim? He is uh, going as yellow today. First land in one of the two air slots for his team. Uh, moving to his upper right hand side in khaki green here is seal force a 1700 also as seraphim also going first land moving further on to his right the first of the three forward slots for his team is triple f from russia he is a cyber and orange there what is it with the russians and the cybers anybody got any ideas any thoughts whatsoever or is it just a myth let us know in the comments uh, moving down then in the mid, we've got in burgundy red is OK Puck, another Cybran. He's going 1800, the middle front slot for his team. And then last but not least for his team in Ferrari red, our first day on of the day is Maximus Triple X. He's uh, currently getting a mass point with his nice shiny eyes and his beam weapons. And it's going to stand still for a second to pose for a photograph. Thanks a lot, Max. I appreciate that, Maximus Triple X there. Uh, perhaps perhaps it was just he forgot to give another order. Let's switch over then to Team 2. We'll start the front as well here. The highest rated player by far today, around 500 points or so ahead of anybody else, is Mimics. Certainly a guy to watch out for. I used to call this guy Mimkiz. <laughs> A thousand apologies for that. It's Mimix. 2300 there in purple. Also as Seraphim. Lots of Seraphims today going first land. Uh, coming over here, the other forward slot for his team uh, is Uri, the 1800. Our first UEF of today going Cyan. He's gone first land as well. Uh, moving around to the first air slot then for team two in blue. Where he is? Here he is. Love me some rice. Another Cybran trundling on his way over. I do love the little footprints that this game leaves. I know it's a very small little detail, but, you know, for something that's so old, it's a, just a nice little, almost cute in it. Oh, look at him go trundling forward there with the cutesy woosy little footprints. <laughs> you watch, I just lost 100 people. I was in for a serious game of lasers and blasting and rockets and missiles, and you had to turn it into some sort of Namby-pamby wipe your nannies. <laughs> Let's leave it there. 
Uh, Lightning Chicken in the back here. Another Cybran 1600 going first land, second air. And then last but not least, which was the other forward slot for his team, is Hannibal Below a 1400, uh, the first Aeon for his team here in Electric Blue. The only Aeon for his team, in fact. A 1400 also having gone first land, second air. And with that, the introductions are complete. Three minutes, 49. Ah, you're slipping a bit. Took you a little longer to introduce two fewer players than the norm. All right, so a couple of things to point out on the map then. Aside from the size, we've got this nice big plateau down here. That is locked off from the rest of the uh, terrain by the steep edges all the way around. There are no slopes. Uh, we do have a drop over here, and it looks like Team 2 have picked it up, who incidentally are almost as if a Hotties versus Coolies uh, setup is this. The only discrepancy is Seal Force, who's gone an almost Coolie kind of colour. Uh, he's got a drop that's gotten picked up here by Yurai, and is Yurai going to shoot it down? Yes, he does. That was a dropship full of engineers, and at 4 minutes 40, that is a very expensive dropship uh, to lose. We've also got these two little... Uh, sort of valet pieces also landlocked if you like by the steep cliffs if that's the word to use just separated off uh, almost like so it's like a double wall section there is only one mass point a piece but nonetheless they are relatively secure if you can hold them and uh, nomander does make a play uh, for this plateau he just manages to get the factory online before his all of his engineers succumb to the bomber overhead there from hannibal o. Uh, Hannibal is going to really delay this. He takes out the radar. Nomander does get the all-important mobile anti-air gun out. But if we take a look over here, Hannibal has already established one land factory. It is not being bombed. He's working on a second. Can anybody guess which way that plateau is going to go? Which is kind of crucial because if we take a look at the map overall, the mirror is from the bottom left here. Uh, up to the top right corner of the map and so we've got one two three four five mass points and so double that there through the mirror makes 10 and if you want to count these uh, in the valley as well that makes 12 i assume if you can secure the plateau area these areas are probably going to fall in your hands as well and so 12 mass points certainly not to be sniffed at we do finally have the solitary asf over here from nomander he was trying to deal with the bombers, but look at this. The coolies working together. Uh, he did shoot down the bomber belonging to Hannah below. But Lightning Chicken now in the area. He's got multiple bombers in the area. Scouts. I, well, again, it's not going to take the biggest crystal ball ever to figure out which way this is going to go. And you see, no man, he's already given up on it. He's not even producing units anymore. The first Aurora there from Hannah below. Will it succumb to friendly fire? The old adage, friendly fight ain't... No, it won't because the Aurora kept moving. But that there is a big win for Team 2. And that shows that very quick mass upgrades is not always the way to go. Simply because it means you're unable to uh, afford your expansions as rapidly in the very early game. Taking a quick look then over on the northeastern side... Trip left with a huge number of factories here. He's, of course, up against Uri. Both of these guys, 1,800 rated, at least according to the Supreme scoreboard. So neck and neck as far as it goes. You can see very similar builds from them both. And again, don't forget, this here is the mirror. Uh, so both players have got the exact same terrain to work with. And they've both expanded to more or less the same areas. Uh, checking in on the middle, players are starting to get the guns. And... As we get to 7 minutes 45, we've got a little drop here coming in. What We've got 8 engineers from Nomander, so that is a massive investment. Although we are, you know, a couple of minutes on from that horrific shoot down from Seal Force. And I just wonder, does the other team see this coming? Well, there's a solitary interceptor there from Nomander. That won't be enough to raise any alarm. And I don't think they've seen it. We come back to Observer. The drop has taken place. They didn't see it. Nomander with a single interceptor in the area. 
that will be more than enough to shoot down uh, if there's any singular uh, scouts that come this way. He gets himself a radar on. And yeah, that could present a massive problem there to Hannibal O. Who has got to feel like he's completely secured this plateau. He's already got four land factories. He's got numerous units there. In fact, he's so convinced he's got a hold, he's detonated two of his four factories uh, to reclaim the mass. If we take a look, that provides 194 mass per factory. And yeah, that's the very worst time. Of course, he's absolutely no idea that anything is the miss here. And he may just have seen that factory there. I'm not sure why that appeared. This engineer, just as it was retreating, must have on the very edge of the edge of its vision seen it. Uh, engineer's creeping out now. He's losing mass points. If his team's paying attention, uh, he will now recognize that. Quick check in on the mid. We've not seen very much take place here so far. Uh, just teams upgrading taking a look here seal force getting an upgrade on the commander being assisted by these mantis i was watching earlier as one of these uh, mantis was assisting the commander and it worked out that the amount of energy that the commander was using for his upgrade in this case the gun uh, was equaled by nine mantis assisting the commander so the nine mantis together was using as much energy as the commander so i assume in my unscientific way of measuring that nine mantis double the speed of the commander's upgrade this is assuming the commander has no tech back to the action then maximus triple x pushing with his sniper comp overcharging as he goes no point standing in the range of the walled off point defense maximus says i know I've already taken a couple of steps back, does the can-can, and then presses again. Both of these commanders pushing Mimics. Uh, Mimics, who is currently up this valley here. There is a solitary commander, Luffy Sunrise, but again, you never really want to be in a 2v1 situation if you can help it. Taking a quick look back over here, Hannibal o finally recognizes the problem. Amanda says, yeah, well, I've got four factories. I've got walled off PD, radar. I've even got an air factory in the area spitting out Tech 1 bombers and versus the AO. They are exceptionally good. Hannibal does have numbers with units so far. His artillery is going after the point defense. But of course, these factories able to just pump out units all the time. Even though he's got numbers, I don't think he can press in. And here we see the bomber three bombs and that initial pass even if it doesn't get another it's going to be pretty hard oh that was so close to getting another one out but yeah here we see the point defense Hannibal o does manage to take one of them out but there's still another one left with six kills Nomander still has three factories he's going for a fourth and I'm seeing electric blue run out of units and fast he's lost his artillery pieces And that there is going to be a hold for Nomander. Quick check-in elsewhere. Still jostling for position up here. Here we see it. Look at this. Commander, right? Using 155 energy for his stealth upgrade. The Mantis here using 17. And so multiply that by 10. You've got 170. Well, it's a little bit less, right? So it's 9. Multiply by 9. And so with this many Mantis uh, on assisting, he's got 40. Well, you know, that's like just in round numbers four times as quick uh, to upgrade i think the mantis has gotten a little buff since years ago to correct us if i'm wrong on that another push through the center then this time mimics in the right place to counter it and perhaps a little mistake from maximus they've thrown units forward the commanders have retreated both Maximus and Seal Force backing off. Not the time you want to back off when an enemy commander with gun is pressing into Tech 1 with spam. He's got a lot assisting him. Okay, Puck does manage to reclaim a single enemy unit there with a couple of engineers, but that is going to be a small silver lining. 
Major push up here. Uray, who has got commander with tech and gun, tech 2, the UEF. He's got a lot of units, but he's also starting his tech 2 point defense crew. This is going to prevent Trip Left from pushing in too far. Although he does have a few mobile missile launchers on scene, which is the perfect weapon for somebody who's going tech 2 PD spam. Uray says, I know. Or rather, Trip Left. I'm an 1800. He's also got gun and stealth, which means, for those who are unaware, you're right, can't see him. You see, he's got all the radar contacts of the surrounding units. He requires spy planes or other aircraft over the enemy commander at all times to see him. And currently able to produce enough spam over there to prevent the uh, stealth facilities of Trip Left working at all. And so Trip Left's going to require some interceptors in this area. We'll switch back to the observer view just temporarily. And it looks like Trip Left's got just enough to hold despite... Yeah, look at you, right. His commander, he's not really using it as a weapon. It's only five kills. He's using it more as a... Well, it's an armed command unit that's building Tech 2 point defense. Very effective versus Triple F, who, look at this, got 65 kills so far on his commander. Quick check back over here on the lower west side. No Manda now pushing out. And, yeah, he sent enough units here, there, and everywhere. Hannibalo is at risk of getting booted off this plateau. Check over here. Lightning Chicken's pushed quite a long way. Maximus here, just enough units to hold. In the center, Mimics continuing to push, and a bit of a problem here for T1. Mimics, with the commander who's only got a gun, has got Tech 3 unit on the line in 15 minutes. He's got a mobile shield as well as sniper bots. Couple of Ilches in the mix. The rest is still spam. Also got Love Me Some Rice in tow as well. But the sniper bots are just able to pick off all of this Tech 1 spam at range. And Team 1 have got no choice but to retreat. They need to switch gears and think of something else. Here I send some units through another direction here. No doubt chasing some of these mobile missile launchers that Trip Left has. But he's got to continue to push to take out a very forward Tech 2 mass extractor. I have noticed this from the higher rated players. They're much quicker to upgrade mass extractors to Tech 2, even if they're on the front line undefended. It's not set in stone, but it's certainly a trend I have noticed. Back to the lower west then. This time it's Lightning Chicken's turn to push with the stealthed up commander with gun. Maximus knows it, runs off. He's trying to establish a forward operating base. And the Oblivion Turret takes one shot, gets two kills. Versus the Manti there. Of course, it won't be able to see the enemy commander unless Triple X gets himself some air in the area. That was a nice shot. Three kills for one shot. Of course, he will be unaware that the enemy commander is operating there. And that is a problem. Almost worth trickling some units away. Maximus, though, rolling some sniper bots on the line. And so, Lightning Chicken's got to be careful. He doesn't get suckered in. Meanwhile, up on the upper east side, Uri pushes in. Trip Left's got to be careful here that he doesn't get cut off. See Uri here with the T2 PD creep continues despite running units forth. There are some Tech 1 point defense here together with the commander. And this will be a hold for Trip Left, but an expensive one. Is he going to lose any of these factories? Two of them go down, surely a third. And indeed it is. But it remains a hold, but only just for Trip Left. He's got almost nothing left. He is starting to sprinkle some more T2 units in. But when you've got enemy commander pushing Tech 2, 
What is that? 17, 18 minutes now. Okay, Puck decides to push through. He's got gun and stealth. He's got a bunch of tech, three units here. Loyalists as well as a couple of bricks. Mimix is here with his uh, pal, love me some rice. He's got the mobile shield. And this, again, perfect play. Commanders retreating, but the units retreating behind the commanders. And then they can always very quickly switch positions should the Bab come into contact with the AC unit. I think it's been enough uh, moments now. I, I, I could use the proper terminology. The shit is the fan. Let's just say it. And this here, top tip. Okay, Puck says uh, he's uh, calling it a day. He's lobbing in the towel. Just 3,000 hit points remain. 2,000, 1,000. Kaboom. And okay, Puck is out. And look at this. Defeated by Mimics on paper. Base control K says no matter. Yes, he did. He blew up his own base rather than allowing it to be handed off. The salt starts to get chucked around from numerous players. Okay, Puck says, when will you decide to play? He's referring to Nomander because his commander's in base. Uh, Nomander uh, says, well, it's because I'm working on the chicken here. That's why. Either way. It was a little salty. Let us know what your thoughts are on that. As we roll around to the 20th minute, somehow Triple F has been able to hold. Somehow. He's got a couple of bricks on the line. He's got an engineer's on reclaim duty. And if we take a little look, there's a five or six thousand mass there. URI continues with his tech 2 PD creep. However, the bricks are very good at dealing with uh, Tech 2 point defense. And there you can see, taking out two of them with no bother. The commander takes out the third, and suddenly Yurai is forced to retreat. He throws what few units he's got forward to buy himself a little bit of time. And Triple F now working on the PD creep. Of course, the, the Cyber and PDs leave a little to be desired. In comes some Tech, tech 1 bombers. Up against Tech 2 Engineers. And... Wow. Take out almost all of them. A couple of very heavily damaged Engineers remain. But that is a lot of build capacity from Triple F. And the, the, the only build capacity he had at Tech 2 uh, that was just completely wiped out. Checking back down here on the lower west side. Maximus is pushing in versus Hannibal. O. Most of this is spam. Hannibalo has got nothing but tech here. Uh, Maximus is following up his push with a little bit of tech. Uh, the sniper bot's shielded up. But, I mean, they're only so good, man. Certainly, if you chuck and spam forward versus Harbs, this is going to only fizzle out. Well, I say it's going to fizzle out. It certainly is when you've got one of these on the line. Hannibalo suckered him in there a little bit, perhaps fearing that more units were to come. No, it was just spam. And Maximus recognises the threat and backs off. Way, way off. That is going to be a hold for Team 2. Chicken here, belonging to Nomander, starting to make it through the front. We saw their Mimics sending some units through, trying to overrun and capture this area that was uh, destroyed by OK Put Control Kate. I should control K in my base myself. Bang, and he whaps the, whaps the phone down. Yeah, that was back from the day where if you control K in somebody's base, that the, the commander detonation was basically as powerful as a nuke going off, and it would destroy it. It wouldn't just destroy engineers. It would destroy all the structures and everything. Leave a comment if you remember those days. Because this little push here from Hannibal O was for no I'm kind of surprised he led his GC with those with those uh yeah the harps because they were completely died for naught. The GC would have wiped this base out anyway. May as well bring the harps behind. 
Coming up now to 23 minutes, we'll have a little look on the Ecos. It's 750 versus 700,000. And so a 50,000 mass advantage currently favouring Team 1 up top. And that will probably be uh, because they got all the Eco from this base. The base was Control K. They were then able to very quickly uh, reclaim the mass and cannibalise that base. And so in the very short term, it gave them a mass boost, although that isn't necessarily translate into a long-term win. So the GC pushing through, it's mostly followed up with spam. We do have a sniper bot. There's a couple of harbs with it, uh, but Maximus here with a harb of his own. So this is going to be GC versus GC. And the two escorting harbs, well, they just get sucked off by the GC. And so with it... Oh, and now the uh, eye temporarily misses. And there are too many GCs here for Max for the uh, other GC here to suck off in one go and so guess who's going to win this engage the guy with more units as soon as both GC's began that with full health we'll check back in on the upper east side quickly your eyes managed to get an upgrade to tech 3 he's now working on the ravagers and so trip left having only just stabilised the situation suddenly finds himself with bother again he does have some tech on the line and he's going right after the Ravager point defense. And of course, he can dance for days, can you, uh, Triple F? He can dance the Ravager. You just got to, you know, keep on it. Keep going back and forth, back and forth. But there's so many bricks here. Apologies for missing this in the center. Terrible of me. So the two chickens from Nomander have come through the center and picked off Mimics. I don't believe he's gotten so close. We do see here, Love Me Some Rice is stealthed up and cloaked up. That'll be the only thing that kept him alive. One chicken dies. The other chicken's still alive. Currently receiving the wrath of Team 2's Air Force. They've got a shedload of fighter bombers. What we got here? 16 fighter bombers from Love Me Some Rice. Lightning Chicken with another 16 as well. And so that's 32 of them, as well as ASF, going after the one remaining chicken that now succumbs as well. Seal Force sends his ASF forward to deal with, thinks twice about it. And the base there handed off twice. And so, guys, the highest rated player in the game is kicked out. That, if you remember, the, the balance between these two teams was incredibly close. Just seven points overall, which averages out at one point per player. It's about 1.3 points per player. That whole advantage has just been cleared out. Yes, it's now a four versus four. But if you look at Mimix's rating, get rid of him. The next highest guy is like 500 points behind. And so this now is a little bit of an advantage for Team 1 overall. Although it's not over. Uri pushing here very strong. Triple F. He's going for the cloak. He'd almost died as well. He's revving up 45 hit points a second, which is very slow for a five-star commander to only be revving up 45 hit points a second. That almost doesn't seem right. He's got gun. He's a five-star and he's only getting 45 hit points a sec. I realize he's not got nano, but come on, man. He's a five-star. Uh, checking back through the mid... Uh, Seal Force looking pretty strong here. There is this, uh, again, we've said this uh, stealthed up, cloaked up commander. He can only be seen by the opposing team with Tech 3 scouts overhead or Omni range. And I'm not sure uh, that Team 1 have Omni range up to this far. Left again, he's got just enough units, it seems, to keep Uri at bay. Who, every time he gets more Ravagers, it's like Triple F gets more bricks and he just presses again. But at some point, you just think, I, I don't know, man, we'll have to see. If Uri can get critical numbers with those Ravagers, I think he will kick Triple F out. If 
Three experimentals, however, from Team 1. We've got the chicken, a bit of spam, and two GCs. Both of which pushing down versus Hannibalo. He's got a few barbs, but I mean, what good is that? And these guys here, who at some point retook the southwestern plateau. Yeah, this is the problem. These are not going to get any shots off, but they are going to feed the chicken with vet. Let's see. Bang. There we go. One star for zero, zero damage whatsoever. Maximus now with a ton of Tech 1 air coming in. Check back in up here. Well, Siege Tanks versus Engineers. I'll let you guess which way that's going to go. Yeah, so look at this. This is what I was fearing. Uri with his... Uh, he's now going artillery as well. He's got Ravager. He's shielded up. And he's... Well, he's just unloading in this base. Triple F has got Cloak. And for... Give me if I don't see that right. That. Look at the icon on the lower left side of the screen. He's got Mazer. This is a cloak. Well, there we go. This changes everything because you're right. Look at this. He can see me, can't see me. Can see me, can't see him. He's flickering in and out. And so most of these ravagers are going to miss. Oh, this is going to be close. Let's go to Observer. Look at all the broadswords. Trip left down to just 8,000 hit points. 7,000. What's Uri doing? He's walked into the laser. 1,000 hit points. 800 hit points. How has that happened? Why did Uri walk into it? Trip left lives to tell the tale with just 800. Yeah, Uri says it. 800 fucking HP. Exactly. The guy who for sure was lost brings it back. The Tech 3 Ravagers, the standoff Tech 2 Artillery, that for sure was going to kick Trip Left out, could only have been repelled by one unit. And that was the stealthed up, cloaked up commander. And somehow he got away with it as well, which is just unbelievable. Checking back in down here, the three experimentals just eating non-stop Corsair fighter bomber from two players here is now a three versus two. Favoring the team up top. 24 fighter bomber Corsairs here. Look at this. They're able to put out 3,000 deep. Yes, that is, of course, assuming the target's in front of them. Of course, when they swing around and turn back around, there's no deep. Yes, in that time. And 30 fighter bombers as well uh, from Love Me Some Rice. Uh, from Lightning Chicken, I beg your pardon. So both of these guys with about 60... Or so fighter bombers between them providing they can keep them alive i.e not let them succumb to inferior asf numbers like this come on man move your air this is where a lack of uh apm becomes a problem and that is a lot of fighter bombers lost to just a handful of asf seal force knew he couldn't win this i don't think he sent more than about 10 asf uh, to take out a huge number of fighter bombers Checking in on the Upper West Side. Where Uri was just taken out his forward operating base is currently coming down to a chicken. Nice little drop here from Triple F with a few bricks. Uh, came down through this way. Has walked all the way round. Look at how many, how many mass points these brick drops have taken out. We knew he didn't come through the mid because the fire base was still there. That is, of course, until this chicken dealt with it. Broadswords do finally take out the bricks, but those were two incredibly high-value bricks. I think all of them were five-star. I say all of them. There was only two of them. Oh, there's another drop over here. Beautiful. He's got to be careful here because there's a new defense belonging to Lightning Chicken. Who does get a chicken online here or love me some rice does. Go on then. Take the other brick, man. There we see. He does finally bring it round. Lightning Chicken now with Tech 2 stack point defense. There's the shot. Boom. And the brick succumbs without taking the nuke defense. It was close. Broadswords up here versus the chicken. But that isn't going to get much further. At least not unless Team 1 send their air. Which they now do. Quick look elsewhere. These Tech 1 bombers from Maximus. I'm sure he's cleared the entire plateau with these Tech 1 bombers. It started about five minutes ago. 
I guess uh, players there has been elsewhere. And again, a mistake. Don't land your broadswords next to this. And again, just shows that the uh, APM task saturation from Team 2, which now I guess we could call the coolies. I mean, don't go there. It's not really a hotties v coolies. It just looks that way. But yeah. Lightning Chicken is the highest rated player, but look, he's operating two bases. They are split as well, uh, so he's doing air as well as the front, which is never best. Uh, I realise when your main base uh, would be the one that you'd be handing to your opponent, kind of makes it difficult, because ideally, you'd say, right, Lightning Chicken control this one and this one, but I believe this base here is Love Me Some Rice's main one, and then give Love Me Some Rice this one and this one, and then you've got one guy focusing on air, one on land. As soon as you split that role, especially between two players, it's never going to be the best. Let's have a quick look what's been going on in chat. You're right. How did we lose this after OK put control K's base? No one made units, but it's fine. We've got mass fabs, says Mimics. All right. Well, <laughs> sounds like they don't got much hope for their team. I don't know why they're saying that, because Love Me Some Rice is pushing through with a couple of chickens. He's got a shed load of sniper bots in tow. Just feels like there's one area that's a little vulnerable, and that is air. Perhaps a few SAM sites. We've got fighter bombers over here. Belonging to Love Me Some Rice, going after a heavily damaged GC. Belonging to Maximus, who's 2v1 anyway. Let you guess which way that went. And finally, yep, yeah, here we go. The air engage we've been waiting for. And both players from Team 2 get their air stuck in. Uh, Seal Force is there with his ASF. I guess he's the only one going air. Either that or his team handed off ASF. And it's going to be close, but it does look like it's tipping in Team 2's favour. Seal Force uh, looks to be running out of air first. He did throw in... A few strategic bombers into the mix as well. Going after the experimentals. He loses a defending chicken. GC down here from Maximus. That's going to take out a second chicken. A third goes down. And that leaves... Love me some rice with just one chicken that is currently surrounded by ion storms and strategic bombers. Well, that's not going to get anywhere far, is it? And that's going to leave an awful lot of mass right on Team 1's doorstep. First nuke out then, 35 minutes and 30 seconds. Strategic bomb run there. Going after Experimental does take it out. The bomber's still in the area. I guess having achieved their primary, are just happy to circle around looking for something else. All get shot down. One gets a bomb off, falls harmlessly into a Tech 3 shield. And the nuke does impact a bunch of uh, Tech 3 engineers and a couple of support commanders with it. Mimics finds it hilarious. I believe they were working on a GC on behalf of Anibolo. And, well, they are no more. It's all gone up. So a high value nuke there not really on the resourcing but on the build capacity and here we've got yet three more GC's another chicken up against a few few restorers there as well as one GC name escaped me just momentarily a bunch of flares and engineers interesting unit to use the flares but this is unbelievable. The, the strategic bombers from Team 1 that have been allowed to get through, the proximity of these experimentals mean the bomb it's one, it's them both. Causes damage to both experimentals. Hannibal O could do with just, just moving one, like this GC, just move it like there, just so that the one bomb can't kill all three or all two units at once, let's say. Broadswords over here from Lightning Chicken, despite being the Cybran, is using the UEF broadswords. Uh, going just holding Trip Left back. 
And yeah, these strategic bombers here from Team 1 continuing to rain fire down. The three GCs continue to press. The chicken bot succumbs. They run into a GC and a light and a chicken bot from Team 1. No doubt going to go after the heavily. Yeah, this again. The GCs are too close together, eating numerous excessive splash damage that they don't have to. One GC is down, two GCs are down. They do manage to kill the enemy GC. Chicken bot goes down as well, but this GC, all right, it won, but is it going to get out of dodge? It's eating Restore of Fire. It's going to get some of that Ion Storm. That is a lot of mass again on Team 1's doorstep. We've got uh, the, the broadswords over here going after what was the support commander drop from triple F trying to capitalize on some of this mass lightning chicken on the ball takes that out and the GC here Uri complaining that his team are making two game enders just make one second guy go air and so let's have a look where the game enders? I guess it's just in the planning stage. The two GCs here. And the one from before and one reinforcing. Just feels like, man, there's no air. There's no air. There's no anti-air. All these experimentals. It's just more, more mass donations. Let's have a little look. What we got there. 200,000, Well, it's an horrific amount of mass. And it's all going to get into the northern team's hands. Very effective push when there's almost nothing to stop it versus just engineers. And Nomander, the beneficiary of all this mass, he's the one sending engineers forward. There is a megalith over here that so far has just been playing security. Hasn't been pushing and it's been enough to hold them back. Oh, the GC pushes right into Maximus's base. This was the one, one remaining one, but Max gets a UFO or donut online just in time. And the GC causes minimal damage. In fact, almost nothing. There's like a structure here that lost, and that seems to be about it. And so in the nick of time there with that donut, in comes a nuke from Team... I don't recall hearing that, but... Perhaps I was just saturated myself. Either way, it is intercepted by Team 1. Who are now sending artillery across the map. We saw this under construction when I was trying to find that game ender. Uh, where is it? Here it is. One kill so far from Seal Force. And he's currently uh, surrounding it with Tech 1 PGENs, which is interesting. I wonder how that compares versus T3. Uh... T3, of course, the splash damage from Tech 1 power generators is much less. I'm not sure if that's his decision or it's just quicker and cheaper to do. And he's currently firing into Hannibalo's main base, and that's probably because Hannibalo is the guy who's working on an emissary, and that's been spotted. A quick check over here what Love Me Some Rice is doing. Well, look at this. He's 75-80% uh, on the way to a Scaphis. And the hit points on that fly up awfully quick. He's got just 1,100 hit points to go. Uh, he's shielded up with the Seraphim shields despite being a Cybran base. And he is now attracting the long-range fire. And so, yeah, I reckon Seal Force has recognized the situation. And is re-targeting or redesignating his targets for the artillery, but it's going to have a hard time uh, cracking through the Seraphim shields. And just uh, 400 hit points remain, and then the Scathis is on. Another nuke out then from Team 2. Going into Team 1's base, Max does have three in the clip, so this is... Oh, it's going to try and take out the, uh, the, the, the wreckage there, but it was just too far. Guess if he'd have aimed it here, he would have got it. And so, yeah. All of that reclaim continues to fall into Team 1's hands. But silver lining now for Team 2. They do get the scaff. It's love me some rice. It spreads its arms. And the droplets of doom 
fire as it initializes its rotation. Here we go. Let's see, can we get a view closer, closer, closer? They almost look like little rockets or large artillery shells. It is quite hard to get a view of them. I'm sure if I pause the camera. And guess what? Seal Forces Air Grid is on the menu. No surprise there. It's unshielded. In they drop. Kaboom. And I suspect Seal Force was very lucky there that those didn't completely wipe out that air grid in one. There is now more fire raining in all the time. And we've got a decent push through from trip left now. Two megalith, a bunch of escorting units, and importantly, a shed load of bouncers. And so, unlike the presses that the lower team have been doing with their experimentals, these guys do got air, or air defense. Got another push over here from Maximus Triple X, who's sending his donut in as well. Oh, look at that. The Scathis fire continues to impact. How did that not take off the Seal Force's air grid? I will never know. Megalith pushing a bunch of broadswords for defense. Guys, if you are enjoying the game, make sure you leave a like. Let these players know. Let me know. I always try, I always try and, uh, <laughs> it's easy as my job, right? I just try and scam in off what other players are doing. If it's a, if it's a crap game, nobody's going to like it, are they? It's all down to how good the game is, let's face it. I love here the use of the chicken from Love Me Some Rice is pushing it in and the Ion Storm is hopefully going to damage some of these. A new comes in and it's into, I don't believe this, it's going to connect. There was a, what's happened to that nuke defense? I think the nuke defense got sniped and with it. Love Me Some Rice has been defeated by Nomad together with the Scathis. I really thought that the lower team had it. They got the Scathis. Look at this. Tech 3 support commanders here from Nomander teleporting around. Just leaving point defense. And then teleporting on. This is so cheeky, man. So whatever Nomander may or may not have done early on by not attending the front line with his commander. I feel he's made up for it. More than, in fact, look, yeah, it was no matter with the attack missile launchers here. These were, I'm sure, the way that this uh, nuclear missile defense was sniped that enabled the nuke to pass on through. It was a very forward nuke defense, let's be fair. And there's so many artilleries now coming the other way. Looks like the Scathis was able to take out the air grid, but look at this. We've got two pieces of Tech 3 artillery here. We've got two more here. And those surrounded off with PGENs. I mean, that's as good as a Scathis anyway. Look at it. Like a machine gun firing through. And they're working together. And Lightning Chicken's air grid is on the menu. And it's going up as we speak. Maximus using his donut as a mobile air-to-air -air unit. In fact, he's got two of them here. Those super long-range air to air missiles, it is a, a really good use of the donut. I really do find that, that uh, they're a fantastic defensive unit and Maximus using them as such. Just methodically going around the map, Lightning Chicken is making a move maybe? Or is he just going to go and pick off that one restorer? He's going for the one restorer and then backing off. Well... Better that than nothing else. 45 minutes now. Look at this guy. Continues to teleport round. He's going to get out as well. I believe that Nomander has just sniped another nuke defense using his support commander. Here he is again. Look at this. He's going after the nuke defenses. He does get taken out and Lightning Chicken shows. Yeah, you layer up three shields. Put a bunch of tech one point defense there. And even if the support commander teleports right there, it only damages the nuke defense by 75%. And so that is going to be a save. Of course, it's vulnerable to just one more teleporting support commander. But it just feels like the damage is done. The long range artillery continues to rain in on the back of Lightning Chicken's base. There's almost nothing here now. 
We do have a strategic missile defense with just 100 hit points left. I have to zoom all the way in to show you graphically how little that is. That is one shot from one unupgraded commander away from death. Certainly any one of these hits it. The shield's cracked, so just one more of anything within range, of course, and it's gone. The shield is regenerating. We see it, but it doesn't come on until it's full. And there it goes. The nuke defense is gone. Quick check over here. The broadswords that have been so valiantly defending the base here for Team 2 have been taken out. A large air engage. And Team 1, oh, sorry, Team 2 have got really no way of replenishing their air. Lightning Chicken does try and pull his air force away or what little is left of it. Flies over Baghdad 2, sorry, Baghdad 9091, should I say. And Seal Force, despite vastly outnumbering Lightning Chicken, does lose his ASF. But, you know, just at, what is that? Is that like 10 that remain? It's less. It's 6. And so I think Team 2 are down in just 10, uh, sorry, 6. Because I don't think Hannibal's got any. But let's verify that. Let's stop with a guesswork. He has none. Literally none. No air of any description of any tech. And so when your opponents have got 6 ASF and you're 48 minutes into a game, you've got 4 players, they've got 2. You've got 4 artillery pieces. You're working on a scathis that, oh, by the way, is like 85% done. You've got a YOLO in back that, oh, by the way... Has been complete. Still getting a missile. It's like 90% complete on its first missile. Does anybody really need a crystal ball to figure out which way this one's going to go after 48 minutes? Man, did it collapse quick after that. I tell you what, man. Lightning Chicken had that Scathis. It was perhaps an oversight. He didn't get a second strategic missile defense here. I realize he had one up here. But it was only one. The move of the century, no man did. I, well, let's hand it to him, guys. I realize his commander back in base early half of the game caused OK Puck to get a little upset, granted. But man, did he more than make up for it second half. The forward TML base is here. The, the teleporting support commanders picking off nuclear missile defenses. In it comes the first experimental nuke of the game, 49 minutes. Hannibal O gets his emissary just online in time for it to meet the end. Has one kill to its name. No Manda says, yeah, that's one kill too many. We'll put that to bed. The experimental nuke spreads out, and that's it. The emissary is good night. And Hannibal O says, ah, sod this. And does the towel. Lightning check and says, yep, yeah, the gig's up. We've got now. We've got now left. Ladies and gentlemen, absolutely fantastic game i hope you enjoyed that thank you very much for joining us do ensure that you leave a like subscribe if you haven't done so already ring the bell if that's your thing and until next time wherever in the world you may be good morning good afternoon good evening and good night thank you very much take care from deep inside the uk Ta-ra. yeah it was all right that one wasn't it sweetheart see ya